one, one of the things, um, say, go, go, go back to the Sinclair Chandler, we had a very good relationship with Willie Sinclair. Uh -huh. the, the band, back in the 1950s, when Harry Dining was the paint major in the Orange Dome, the band played Sinclair Chandler. And that continued until, I think in the late 50s, you couldn't get Sinclair Chandler's. Uh -huh. we, played, we played McPherson's. And then when Sinclair started production again, I think just the mid 60s, we were straight in with the new, new set and, and we stuck, stuck right, right through to the 80s. Um, one of the things, we had a number of sets of Sinclair drones in the band. Uh -huh. um, we also, and it was a tip I got actually from John McAllister. John told me somebody come in the shots and the, the drones maybe weren't up to scratch or what, what they expected. They would experiment different different joints and so forth. And then well, they, would, they would send whatever was needed, they would send up to sinkers and get the replacement joints. So I, I asked Willie Sinkler, would he make me six base drone bottom joints? And I put those, I had one, I'd one on my own pipes at the time. And it just seemed to beef, beef the bass drone sound up. It was, yeah. a, it was a fine, it was a fine, finely bored bass, bass bottom joint. I think it, the, it was the same diameter as, say, uh, the tenor bottoms. Uh, uh, because I had a, a very, very, very good set of Troll Hendersons uh, made in 1914. Right. And when I joined the, the Glasgow Police uh, band, I had the, these pipes and Ronnie Laurie got hold of them. And Ronnie, uh, one is great attributes was a uh, sound, uh, especially drone sound. And he seemed to know what he was doing with drones and all this. And him, he got together with Bobby Hardy. And uh, they put, uh, I was just a young guy. I was only 22, 23, 24 when all this was going on, 25 maybe, you know. And uh, they did away with the, uh, I, I got the, the bottom joint, the original, they gave it to me, but they took the mounts off that and they made me a new bottom joint and it was at the tenor diameter. Put that in and they uh, were tremendous. Uh, they, they were good drones anyway, but they, uh, they very, very good uh, bass sound off it. Uh, so there were two or three folk experimenting with bottom joints at that particular uh, time, yeah. Well, when was the do, last do, time do you left the set of pipes? When, when do, do you still play or what? Still, um, actually, um, I played them yesterday because I've been down here, I'm down here with Ken at the moment, Aye. and uh, I brought my pipes down. Uh, I'm going to try, try a few reads. Um, the last public appearance was on the 2nd of April. I was playing in the Ross Priory in Garda Horn, uh -huh. outside Ballach, at okay. my youngest niece's wedding. But uh, prior to what I have done over, over the past eight years, on and off, is um, done presentations of Tunes from the First World War and then yes. tunes from the Second World War. I, I get yeah. very interested in, in the, 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 the history and the story behind the tunes in the two, first, uh, the two World Wars. Aye. And, um, uh, it, taking of Bowman Hamill, for instance, in the First yeah, World War yeah. and, and marches like that, the Cantara to El Arish and all this. Yes. Actually, the, the, it's fascinating the, the stories behind these say, First World War tunes. I quite agree. Uh, ah, well, it's too bad you couldn't have put the pipes up and uh, just to finish up and, and give me a take of Bowman and Hamill, you know. I mean, could I give me um, marks out of 10 for that? Yeah. Well, they're, they're not far away. <laughs> would, would, would you like a tune? I just put them up and and then uh, we'll, we'll call it a day. Would you like to say goodbye to the folks before you go? Yes, I hope I hope we've enjoyed the chat. 
And um, I made him play Bowman Hamill, but let, let, let's see what happens. Okay, thanks very much, Harry. We'll call it a day. Beautiful music. I lost the sound there just laterally, but you hear me all right? Yes, yes. Aye, I get the first two parts perfectly. I don't know what happened to the microphone, the third, fourth parts, but the pipes are going well. And I just, I don't see why you can't play the, the full uh, medley uh, and the Glasgow Green. You should be out there along with the rest of them. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. You might, you might uh, be one of these reserve players and say, "We've not got enough players. Uh, we'll need to uh, get to step in at the last minute." Make a practice chant <laughs> out, learn all these tunes. Right, okay, that's right. Listen, thanks very much for everything, and uh, that was a wonderful interview. And I'm quite sure all the folks will enjoy uh, when they eventually put it up. Uh, I'm not going to put out immediately, uh, I'm, but I made it in the mall. And uh, come August, I'll start uh, feeding them through and everybody will see what's going on. Harry, thanks very much. Uh, sincerely, a uh, lovely conversation with you and enjoy uh, uh, speaking with you. And if you're across at the world in August, we'll uh, have a, another conversation and look after yourself. Thanks very much again. Again, thanks, Alan, for asking me to, to do this. So stay safe. Bye-bye. Okay, thanks, Harry. Bye-bye.